didn't you know these days anyway ladies welcome so today we are going to look at the historical process and our learning objectives are to analyze the historical process in the caribbean we need to define migration and we need to look at the different theories of migration and there's also one more objective sorry which is the impact impact of the indigenous peoples on the Caribbean. So these are the four objectives that we're going to look at. But before we go into the lesson, I need us to look at a timeline of the Caribbean. So when we talk about the historical process, we're talking about all the events that would have happened in the Caribbean, right? I tell a lot of history because we are looking from 11,000 years ago to around to the present, right? So it's a lot of history this. This is quite a lot of history to cover. So the first thing that we need to know is that a group of people would have came to the Caribbean 11,000, not the Caribbean, a group of people would have came to the Americas 11,000 years ago. And then 1,200 to 1,300 AD, another group came into the Caribbean for what we call the Caribbean today. At 1492, the tranquility of those people were disrupted with the arrival of Christopher Columbus. He did not discover the Caribbean. He came, he saw, and he conquered. The next thing, ladies, by 1500, they would have settled on some of the islands, most of the islands in the Greater Antilles. The next thing that is happening, ladies, is that once Columbus, once the Spanish settled, other European countries are going to get jealous and they are going to come into the Caribbean and they are, are the Americas and they are going to want to claim land. The English, the English came, they would have settled in St. Kitts. Please mark that down, write it in your notebooks. Remember this, it's a very popular multiple choice question on the paper one. So St. Kitts, Christopher Columbus, now Christopher Columbus, the English came and they conquered St. Kitts in 1623. They took over St. Kitts. It was also called St. Christopher, 1623. Then another area, another territory that the English would have taken over would have been Barbados. And then they went and they took over Jamaica and then other Caribbean islands, right? So at this time, between the 1600s and the 1700s, you have the arrival of Columbus, not the arrival, the arrival of other European groups, such as the French, the Dutch, the English. To some extent, the Portuguese, but they didn't settle uh, in the Caribbean. And then also, they are going to, the Africans are going to be imported in. The Caribbean. So, so we have the first set of people living here would have been the indigenous people. Then the Europeans came. But in the 1500, they had a few Africans living in the Caribbean, but not a lot of Africans. But between 1600 and 1700, there's a great importation of Africans to work on sugar plantation. After that, no, the Africans are going to fight for their freedom. And so there's going to be a resistance to slavery. By 1838, ladies, we are going to have 1838, around this time, the Africans in the British colonies, not the entire Caribbean, because the Cubans got their emancipation later on their freedom from slavery. So emancipation has to do with the freedom from slavery, all right? Emancipation means freedom. So they, in 1838, the British got, the, in the British islands, the enslaved Africans would have received their freedom. Then after that, no ladies, once their freedom finished, some of them left the plantation, they established free villages, they, they came together, they bought lands, they 
move off the plantation, stop work on the plantation, some of them start small businesses, that's called peasantry. Because of the great exodus from the plantation, other people or other groups of people are coming into the Caribbean between 1838 and 1865. So we have people like the Indians, the Chinese, the Africans, other Africans came within this time to fill the gap on the plantation. The next thing they did is that after that now, the Caribbean has some issues and one of the other major events that are going to take place is the Morant Bay Rebellion. After the Morant Bay Rebellion in the Caribbean, a lot of things in the Caribbean was horrible. Unemployment rate was high. Poverty was the nature of the Caribbean. Maybe today is the same. People don't have any form of political right. People could not vote, especially black, well, black people could not vote. Our people of African descent could not vote. Therefore, they are going to have major riots. They are going to have riots in Barbados, in Jamaica, in Antigua, in St. Vincent, in Trinidad. Riots all over the Caribbean. So Britain now is going to say, no, what is going on in the Caribbean? What is going on in the Caribbean? Why there is all these riots? So in the 1940s, In the 1940s, what they're going to do is he's going to send somebody by the name of Lloyd Moyne to come into the Caribbean to do an investigation on the reasons why the people in the Caribbean are rioting during the 1930s. Out of this, Moyne is going to say, listen, the people in the Caribbean, they don't have a say. Poverty, health care, Prison system is horrible. Economy is horrible. The Caribbean is just a mess. So Moyne is going to say, why not give the people independence? Prepare them for independence. Build schools. Build this. You know, make some changes to the Caribbean. And so by the 1940s, we are going to have adult suffrage. Where? Adult suffrage. People are going to now receive the right to vote. And so we are going to have internal self-government under Britain. And by the 1960s, ladies, by the 1960s, we're, we're going to have political independence. The first British country to gain their independence in the Caribbean is Jamaica, followed by Trinidad, then Barbados, then Guyana, Grenada, St. Vincent, and it goes on and on. So we are now in the period in the Caribbean of independence. How many years in Jamaica got their independence? Anyone? Anyone? How many years we got our independence? We got our independence in 1962. So it is how many years we have celebrated recently? Is it 58? 59? 59? Anyone? 58. 58. Very good. 58 years since we have been independent. So this is where we are now on the timeline. So you realize, and how long slavery would have ended? Slavery ended in 1838. So make, do the calculation. How many years since slavery would have ended in the Caribbean? 82, sir. 1838? Oh, 182. 182 years. That's not a long time. That is 182 years since we have our freedom. In looking at the time frame here, or the timeline, it's not a long time since Africans would have received their independence 182 years ago. In fact, the Glena recently celebrated 180 years. Your school celebrates 100 and I believe your school is now celebrate 90, is 95? Yes, sir. 95 years. I went to Jamaica College. So Jamaica College started in 1795. 
So JC is over 200 years old. So JC is older than when slavery ended. So if we Scotia Bank, not Scotia Bank, NCB celebrated, I believe, 108 years, about three years ago. It's not a long time since slavery has ended, and it's not a long time since independence would have happened. So, ladies, this is our timeline. So, for this class, we're going to start here. 11 years ago. When we talk about the Americas, what are we talking about? So, like the Caribbean in, and um, like North America and South America. Yes, you are correct. So when we talk about the Americas, we're talking about North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, which is also called the Western Hemisphere. All right? In, so long before this side of the world was populated, we need to know who were the first group of people to settle or live within this the Americas, all right? Indigenous, what, what is the word indigenous? Originating from a place. Originating from a place or any other person, indigenous? When you hear the word indigenous, what comes to mind? There's something unique. Something unique, yes, you're correct. Laxman. Laxman is here. Show the iPhone. Native. Native. All right. So that's what comes to mind. Sanchez. What comes to mind when you hear the word indigenous? Something is indigenous. What comes to mind? Um, the original um, people of a place. The original people of a place. So you are all correct. So when we talk about indigenous ladies, we're talking about the first people who would have settled in the Americas. The first people who would have settled in the Americas, they are called native, they're also called native Indians, native Americans, Amerindians, pre-Columbian people, pre-Columbian Indians. That's what we mean when it's the word indigenous, all right? Now, where did they came from. Now, the indigenous people came from a part of Asia, and they came across the Bering Strait. They came down into North America, Central America, South America. Now, there's a few things that we need to know about them. Is that they came at different times during the Ice Age. They settled at various places in the Americas. They developed their own culture. Each settlement had their own social, political, and economic system, although at times some of the political, social, and economic systems were similar, and they would have interacted with each other. All right? So these are some of the facts that we need to know about them. They came across at separate times. Now, today, this area you look on my screen where I have the cursor, follow the cursor. This area is the Bering Strait, and this area is now a sea. Well, it is a sea, which is the Bering Strait is a sea. And so, what is happening is that the first thing is that they came during the Ice Age. The first people came during the Ice Age at different times. They settled different places. Now, one of the main views is that first, the first people followed herd of theirs who were searching for food. And so they followed them during the Ice Age because the place was so cold and they 
came across this side of the world. And the herds actually, they, the, the first people ate the herds for food and they also used them for clothing. And so that's why they would have followed the animals. The next thing, ladies, there are two theories of migration. Two theories of migration about the indigenous people. We have the land bridge theory and the ice bridge theory. The land bridge theory argues that they cross a lot across land to come across, but remember today here is a sea. The other view is that during the ice age, the entire place was ice, and so they crossed over. Which, which one of the views do you agree with? Are you accepting? Which the one sounds the ice one sound more believable? Anyone else? Is that the ice one, sir? Okay, why you say the ice one? Because it just makes sense. You said that the place was cold and up that side is cold, so I would expect ice to be there. All right. So there are, these are the two prevailing views, the ice bridge and the land bridge theory. Now, in the Caribbean, ladies, when we talk about the Caribbean, we are talking about all the areas that are in yellow, right? Those areas represent the Caribbean that we are looking at. We have Belize in Central America, Ghana, Suriname, French Ghana, and South America. Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, Tobago, St. Vincent, Grenada, and we continue up, 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 Bahamas, sir. So all of these areas are the Caribbean. So we need now to know which group settled where. And these are the different groups of indigenous people who have settled in the Caribbean the Tainos, the Kalinagos, the Mayas, and the Garakunas. We no longer use the word Arawaks, and we no longer use the word as. That's an incorrect designation of the people. They did not call themselves Arawak, and they did not call themselves Cams. They call themselves Tainos, and they call themselves Kalinagos. The Mayans call themselves Mayans. No. Arawaks is their language. So both the Tainos and the Kalinago, they spoke the Arawakan language. Both the Taino and the Kalinago spoke the Arawakan language. Carib, the indigenous people said, listen, you, they, they, sorry, the Europeans said that the indigenous peoples were cannibals. So they call them Caribs. And in reality, they, we know for sure if they were really cannibals, none of the Europeans would have lived to tell the tales about that they would have discovered in quotation the Amur. Another group that we're looking at is the Garpunas. The Garpunas are a mix between the Tainos and, sorry, not the Tainos, the Cal Kalinagos and the Africans. So when the Africans came, they had sexual relations with the Kalinagos and it produced another group that is called Garifuna. All right? Where did the Tainos and Kalinagos came from? They came from this area in South America, in the area which is now known as Venezuela, the Orienco River, along the Orienco River right here. They came from, they went across on Canoe to Trinidad, then they went to Grenada. They went up, 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 up till they, pop they populated the entire region. At one point in the Caribbean, all the islands were colonized, or I shouldn't use the word colonized, all the islands were settled by the Tainos. Then after, another group came from the same region, same family, same cousin, they spoke the same language, they came after and they colonized they came and they went and tried to take over the entire Caribbean. Take over from the Kalinam, the Tainos, sorry, the Tainos. So at the time when Christopher Columbus arrived in Trinidad, 
both Cali Kalinagos and Tainos live on the island of Trinidad. Same for Puerto Rico. Same for Puerto Rico. Tainos live on the west. Kalinagos live on the east. Barbados. Tainos live, in, live on Barbados. Most of these islands here in the Eastern Caribbean, the Kalinagos would have pushed the Tainos or captured their villages and they would have pushed them northward. In fact, when Christopher Columbus came, there was a big war on, on the island of Puerto Rico because the Kalinagos were trying to take over the entire island from the Tainos. Where did the Tainos settle? So we know originally they would have settled elsewhere, but when Christopher Columbus came, they would have settled in areas like part of Trinidad, Barbados, part of the Puerto Rico, island of Hispaniola, Cuba, Jamaica, Bahamas, Turks. Cayman Islands, they didn't settle there because Cayman had, didn't have a river, no fresh water. And for you to settle somewhere, you need rivers and you also need fresh water. Any question, ladies? Any questions? No, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Good. All right. Next point, ladies. So we know where they would have settled and their settlement pattern. All right? Impact. Oh, the next one. Sorry, my bad. So we don't know. There's one more. Belize, Belize, Andreas along here, the Mayas would have settled. The Garifunas are originally from St. Vincent. However, the Garifunas had a very big war with the British and the British expelled them to St. Vincent and Honduras. And that's why today in St. Vincent, sorry, that's why today in Belize, you have Garifunas living in Belize, all right? Now, what are, so those are the four groups that we are looking at for Caribbean studies. Next one. Another misconception that we need, a mistake that students make, indigenous is not the same as indentured Indians. Indigenous Indians are not the same as indentured Indians. Indigenous Indians came 11,000 years ago, indigenous Indians include groups like, could you name the groups for me? Tainos. Yes, Tainos. Kalinagos. Yes. Mayas. Mayas and? Garifunas. Garifunas. So when, that, so when we talk about the indigenous Indians, these are the people we are talking about. Indentured Indians came after slavery ended from India in 1838. It's a common mistake, ladies. Students go into the C -sec the safety exam and they ask them, describe four features or four contributions of the indigenous people. And they start to tell you all about Indian, indigenous people using curry, indigenous people doing roti, dance, all of these different stuff. No, they're asking about the contribution of the Tainos, the Kalinagos, the Mayas, and also the Garifuna. Those were the indigenous people who would have lived in the Caribbean. Is that one? Is that clear? Yes, sir. And on that note, Paris Claire. Paris? Yes, sir. So explain to me what's the difference between indigenous Indians and indentured Indians. Who were the indigenous Indians? Who were the indentured Indians? Anyone want to help her out?
The indigenous Indians were those who came, what was it, seven, what was it, how much years ago, sir? 11,000. 11,000 years ago. Oh, yeah, there it is. And then the, um, the indentured Indians were those who came directly from India in, for, like, work. Okay, very good. They came as contract laborers after slavery ended. Very well. Thank you very much. Claire, Paris Claire. Yes, sir. What is the, what's the difference between the indigenous Indians and the the and the indentured Indians? Sir, the indentured Indians are the ones that came after slavery. Yes. And the indigenous Indians are the ones that came from long time before that. All right, good. So you're not going to make the mistake in exam, correct? Yes, sir. Very I'm good. Very good. Excellent. All right, now, ladies. So we have moved from here. Now we're going to look at their contribution. What are the contributions of the indentured, the, not the indentured, the indigenous people? So we talk about indigenous people, we are making reference to the Tainos, the Kalinagos, the Garfunas, and the Mayas. Can I imagine getting an entire 20 marks essay to write about the contributions of the indigenous Indians, so you have the points right here. All you have to do is formulate them in sentences, give examples, and you get your full mark, 19 out of 20. All right, so the first thing is that the first if impact or effects of the indigenous people on the Caribbean today is demography. What do we mean by demography? Demography. Gilbert. Yes, sir. What do we mean about, when we talk about demography? What are we talking about? Sir, um, that's like the study of like characteristics of a human population. Very good. Population. Human population. So characteristics of the population. So that's what we mean by demography. Now, today in the Caribbean, you are very correct, very good. It, today, we have demographic effects of indigenous people. Shockingly, most of you might be told or was told that, listen, there's no indigenous people living today in the Caribbean. Not true. In Dominica today, Kalin Kalinagos are still in Dominica. In Belize and St. Vincent, you have the Garcunas living there. Mayans are also living in, descendants of the Mayans are also living in Belize today. So they do have an effect on our demography. Till today, we still have these people a part of us. They still contribute part of our demographic makeup as Caribbean people. That's one of the major effects of these people, right? The next thing, is our language. Indigenous people influence our language, like names of countries, Haiti. The entire island of Hispaniola was called Haiti, which, the, which is the Anglo, the anglicized version of it is Haiti. And the indigenous word for that means land of hills. Cayman is also an indigenous word, which means crocodile. Jamaica, the English version for that is Jamaica, which is land of wood and water. And Cuba is also an indigenous word. I do not know what Cuba means. I need to do the research. But names of towns in Trinidad are also, and rivers in Trinidad, and mountains in Trinidad, and Grenada, and Dominica also has indigenous names like Arima, Tuna, Puna, uh, and Karu Karanai, right? So these are names of places in Trinidad that has a name. So if you go into the exam, ladies, and you're writing, and they ask, so what are some of the effects of the, or they ask the question, 
discuss the effects of the indigenous people on the Caribbean, you can argue that one of the effects of the indigenous people on the Caribbean is our language. Our language is highly influenced by the indigenous people in terms of names of country, names of places, population, popular words in the Caribbean. For example, names of countries in the Caribbean uh, with indigenous names include Haiti, which means land of hills, the Cayman, came, came which means crocodile, is indigenous word for crocodile, Jamaica, land of food and water, and Cuba. Names of towns and popular and rivers and mountains in Trinidad also has indigenous names, such as Aruma and Tuna Puna. There are also popular words that have the indigenous that we use today that have indigenous origin. Words such as barbecue, hammer, tobacco, canoe, hurricane. In fact, one of the most popular words that we have used in the Caribbean is hurricane. Not all, not all, also we need to mention barbecue. Everybody love barbecue chicken. I don't see anybody that don't love barbecue chicken. So when they do barbecue at St. Andrew and I go down there, from barbecue chicken, all of you finish the barbecue chicken and just leave the fried chicken there because everybody loves barbecue. That is one of, these are some of the legacies in terms of our language, the linguistics, when it comes to the indigenous people, their influence still remains with us today. So, so ladies, you see, I've developed that point for you. That is 100 words, you get Answer that question, you get a full marks there. Next. Another thing that influence the indigenous influence that the indigenous people had on the Caribbean is your food, cuisine, such as popular dishes in the Caribbean, especially in pepper pot. Pepper pot is a national dish for Guyana. So pepper pot is an indigenous dish, they still use it. Cassava bread, bami, that most of you eat. Fry bami and fish. Somebody going abroad, they always ask her to bring up bami, right? Jerk, barbecue. Indigenous people are the first to, to jerk the iguanas, jerk things over fire. Uh, turtle soup. In Cayman, turtle soup is called frog soup. Most of you, I don't know if you have ever had turtle soup before, but turtle soup is still popular in the Caribbean. Iguana is still almost every most Caribbean countries eat iguana. Even in Jamaica, even Jamaica they eat crocodile. Some places in Jamaica they eat crocodile. Yeah. Crab, lobster, most of you love crab and lobster. Chocolate. The indigenous people were the first to make chocolate because they had the cocoa, so they made the chocolate. And the the the, the, the Europeans came, saw them with the chocolate took the cocoa and they popularized chocolate in Europe and make, and make it seem as if chocolate came from them in Europe. It's actually us in the Caribbean, the indigenous people who came up with chocolate. They made it first. Manicou is a type of rat that is popular in Trinidad, Guyana, Grenada, and it is eaten there, Manicou. Anybody? Next, next one. So popular dishes, ladies, influence. Oh, the internet is on this. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. But could you repeat, repeat, please? Which one I should repeat? I'm not sure what you said. You cut out for a minute. Okay. Uh, so the last, the last point that you made. The last point about Maniku. Yes. Yeah, I was saying that Maniku, Maniku is a popular dish in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, it's a type of rat that the people hunt and they eat it. It would look more like what we call, with that little thing always run across Mona Road name. Mangoose. The mangoes, yes. 
every time I drive in from UA on Mona Road, they always see the mangroves going. You know, around there, so it's very rural. To think about it, there's a lot of mangroves around there, birds, um, what else? Cows, a lot of cows around Mona side. It's very rural, very, very rural. It's like a rural part of the country, a rural part of the city, very, very rural. It's because you have all of these different mangoes, a lot of birds, and a lot of fruit trees and rivers and what else they have around there. They have a big pond that people go and exercise. Very rural. But anyway, ladies, Manico. So you have never seen Manico before. You want me to show you a picture of Manico? Yes, sir. All right. You are seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Manico Trinidad, Lord Jesus. I don't know how people eat this. <laughs> I could never. So that's how it looks. Sir, you still see yeah. the PowerPoint. We still see the PowerPoint. Yo, you're not seeing this. All right, let's have uh, one second. Where? Let us stop. Stop here. Uh, and I'm going to show you this one. Yes, ladies. That's how the manicu look that they eat in Eastern Caribbean. Uh, and you see the, the, the guy with the manicu in his hands. So they have a gun that they go into the, 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 the forest area and they shoot it and they capture it. When they bring it home, you boil it. And then you cook it, and people actually love it. Uh, another, and that's something that the indigenous people would have ate, and people still eat it today. Iguana was another thing that they ate, and people still eat it today. When I was in Cayman uh, uh, years ago, I was living this side some people from Honduras or Nicaragua. And trust me, I could smell the food. So one day I said to my grandmother, I said, Grandma, you know that the people over there cooking curry chicken. <laughs> I mean, so the curry, because I love curry, right? I said, the curry chicken really smells good when I'm cook. And my grandmother said, you never see that? Look, look through the window. You'll see that is... Is the iguana, iguana, they might cook around there. I'm like, iguana smells so good. It smells like curry chicken. Anybody has ever had iguana before? No, no sir. sir. <laughs> I've never had it before, but it's one of the delicacies that people eat. I you know that people in Jamaica eat crocodile. You know that. Sir, isn't that like illegal? Yes, it is, but people still eat it. People Sir, eat my it. friend, like he would um like kill rabbits and then like he, he grow them and then he kills them and eat them. Lord of mercy. That's I know <laughs> people use them. Be, I know yeah, so he, he has like a whole go ahead. Yeah, he has like a whole um like a whole home and like he usually buy them as a um as like uh, from their small and then he grow them and then kill them and eat them. Yes, that is true. Anybody live in Spanish town? There's an area in Spanish town that is called Walks Road. Anybody from that area? Anybody live Angels? Along that side, no student. All right, so there's a part in Spanish one that is called Walk Road, right across from GC Foster College. There's a man that actually jerks rabbit. And trust me, on a Friday night, you want to see how much people over there eating the, the rabbit. I don't have problem. It because it tastes like chicken. You have had it before? Yes. It tastes just like chicken. 
It tastes like chicken. When I went to um, one of my friend's parties, her dad actually gave it to us. Well, it tastes like chicken. Like, it just don't have no bone. It tastes like chicken. Yeah. It tastes just that, like chicken. It's just boneless. You know the same thing they say about the iguana that iguana tastes like chicken also. I you that's a little bit too much now. So, so what I think is that anything tastes good once you season it right. Ah, true. You are so correct. <laughs> once you know how to season it, it's gonna taste good. It's gonna taste good because it's seasoning that gives you the flavor, the taste. Is it true? Yeah, you are correct. I agree. So what we have now, ladies, here is that evil rabbit. Is, did the indigenous people eat rabbit? I think so. Maybe that's one of the stuff from them. Fruits. A lot of the fruits that we used to eat, ladies, came from the indigenous people. Pineapple, mommy apple, I believe they call that star fruit. Today, papaya, plums. Indigenous people would have used that a lot. Ground provisions such as uh, sweet potato, cassava, maize, cocoa, all of those different stuff, ladies, are things that came from the indigenous people. So they still influence our diet. Maybe not us in Jamaica with the iguana, but we, we know for sure that they would have done the other. Right? And the manicure, because I do, with those we have manicure here. The next thing, ladies, is recreational activities. The indigenous people influence our recreational activities, such as fishing, rafting, canoeing, smoking, tobacco. They were the very first people to grow tobacco and the very first people to smoke it. The Europeans came, saw them smoking it, liked it, and they popularized it in Europe. Same thing with potato. It's not Irish potato. Potato came from the Caribbean. Potato did not, is not Irish. All right? So stop going around and tell people about Irish potato. When your mother sent it to the supermarket and say, oh, buy some Irish potato, say potato. Because it's not Irish. All right? The next one, tourism. Some of our very Popular places in the Caribbean today are used, are where indigenous people would have lived, are used for tourism, such as the Mayan site, the Taino, the Taino sites, museums, the hotels. So, for example, in Grenada, let us see if I can show you a picture of that hotel in Grenada. Where it is. Koyaba Hotel. So Koyaba actually means Koyaba. Grenada. So that's a name of a uh, Hotel in where is it? So I'm not sure if this is oh this is the one. Yeah, so this is the Kayabo Hotel, pretty nice hotel here, which actually means Kayaba actually means heaven. And there's quite a lot of other indigenous names that we have used uh, in the Caribbean. So Kayaba is one. Another, for example, the Mayan sites. The Mayan sites. A lot of people visit the Mayan sites for we call it now for, for hotel for not for hotel for tourism countries make a lot of money from their heritage their indigenous heritage 
uh, let us see if I could find one of the, when I went to, I think call that bridge again. I went to, to this, what is, when I went to Mexico, I also, let us see, I also would have visited a Mayan site. My friends, it's very beautiful. I know Mexico is not in the Caribbean, but I went to Belize and, I, and I, when I went to Belize, I wanted to visit the sites in Belize, but I would have missed my flight and I had to, I never had any money. So I was moneyless for all the time I was in Belize. I visit a part that is called Yushmal. I want to show my video because they are not. And let me show the other videos and I upload it on YouTube. Anyway, I'm not seeing my video here. Maybe I have it as private. So, No, I'm not seeing it here. So anyway, it is. So Yushmal is also a very popular one that we use. In Jamaica, we also use, have a lot of businesses in Jamaica that name Zamaica. We have beach resorts that with the name, we have beach resorts with the name Zamaica. So, okay. Museums, quite a lot of businesses and hotels and tourism still use the indigenous culture, right? All right, so ladies, these are some of the impacts, impact, influence tourism and business today. The indigenous people still influence it through site visits, visits museums, names of hotels, uh, names of businesses, recreational activities. We still use it, especially the Fishing and rafting and canoeing, ex rafting, especially on, we call that place in, in Portland. Oh yes, the Blue Lagoon people still go and raft, they're using the bamboo. Food, popular dishes, fruits, ground provision, names of places, towns, popular words are still influenced by the indigenous people and the demography. All right, ladies, so that's it for today. Tomorrow, we are going to look at the impact of the European on the Caribbean. All right, ladies, any question? No question, sir. Um, I'm just um, reminding you to send this PowerPoint to us, please. Okay, no problem. But you also have this stuff, you know, the recording it. Why? So the principal, let us take this. Stop recording.